right. Good morning. Good morning to any replayers. If you are a replayer, you can still participate. You can um, tap on the screen for hearts. You can. Hi, Kimmy. Hi, Blessed Budgets. Hi. Hi, go, Fafa, go. Um, you can share this uh, broadcast, of course. You can find me on Twitter and Snapchat if you're not following me on those. Sometimes I share links. Obviously, you can watch this in your Twitter feed. And if you're on Snapchat, it's a great place to message me. Hi, Christy. Great place to message me uh, if you have questions about what I talk about or about your specific situation. Hi, love it, 816. So, everybody else that's joining live, hello, 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 welcome. And if you are, good morning, if you're new to me, oh, it's been a while. Hi, hi, good to see you on here. My name is Joanna Zarek. And I uh, broadcast every single day, seven days a week on Money Habits at 10 a.m. Chicago time. And I talk about money habits because it's so important to have good money habits. I think that as we get older, or even if we're younger, uh, hi Benji Sharp, we realize that things that we do habitually, things that we do regularly really contribute to our well-being. And... Um, there are like the, th the trifecta that we all need to be paying attention to is money, relationships, and our health. And all of those things uh, have a lot of things in common. I talk about money. Why? Because I love money and I love numbers. So what's the topic for today? Okay, so yesterday we talked about um, Maslow's Pyramid. If you're not familiar with this, you can Google it. Uh, it should pop up a little pyramid picture. And basically it's a, it's a theory from one of the psychologists uh, of, uh, of time past, uh, but it's actually a very solid foundation and something that I reflected on and I started thinking about how I spend my time according to those, those pyramid. As you get further and further in life and as you sort of take care of, hi Anthony, good to see you on here, as you take care of certain things in your life, you know, progression, we talk about being on a financial journey and making progress, hi Melissa, uh, making progress over time. Um, then you need to start reflecting on things, right? As you achieve things, hi, good morning. As you achieve things, um, you need to keep moving forward. One of the th reasons that motivates me to talk about financial freedom is the context in which I talk about, right? Financial freedom isn't just to get, um, thank you for inviting followers, oh, good night. Uh, and uh, it's not just about, um, sort of having all of it, right? Having the most, having the biggest of everything. Uh, it's about getting to a place in your life where you feel like you can contribute the best of yourself back to others, right? As you know, I'm not a person who says, look, you should just accumulate a bunch of money and then sit back and do nothing, right? All I advocate is for financial freedom to give you the freedom to be who you want to be. So yesterday I talked about... Um, I talked about the Maslow's Pyramid and I said, look, I'm going to do this exercise. And it was actually really, really fun uh, to do that. And I haven't finished my entire chart, but I'm going to pop it up and uh, see if I can, I will dress it up later, but I'm going to pop it up and I'm going to talk about what is on this chart and uh, what, why it's interesting to me. Um, sometimes, you know, I'd make myself do the exercises that I, I suggest people do because they are very revealing. I don't know if I can get brighter. For some reason, let's not, hold on, let me see if I can get it brighter in here, uh, because I feel like it's dark. It's dark outside, and it actually affects the, the brightness of my screen. And for some reason, I cannot get it to be brighter. Let's see. I don't know, can anybody see this? Do you guys see this? Because to me, it looks really, really dark. And I don't know uh, if I can make it brighter. Hello, computer. How do I make it brighter? <laughs> Open energy saver. Okay, you can see it. Great. All right, then I'm not going to mess with it. Okay, here's the, here's the, here's the chart. I'm going to explain you what you're looking at. Okay, so there's five levels of the pyramid. And here, I just want to, I want you to look at it from the bottom. First, you need to address your physiological needs. And I know there's a lot of people that are still struggling with getting, you know, food, water, shelter, um, and sleep, you know, then you need to address it. And I know that that's important. The next is safety and security. That's like employment, that's like stability, living, you know, not worrying about things. Um, 
And uh, we still, you know, you kind of get to the next level. It's maybe picking the neighborhood that you live in. Uh, maybe it's choosing a job that's a certainty versus taking risks. Love and belonging is you know, the third layer of the pyramid. It's really important part of our lives to feel connected to people. You know, I talk about connectedness, um, but also family and also belonging in a tribe or belonging in a community. Self-esteem is next. It's kind of a, it's confidence, it's status, it's feeling achieved, feeling recognized. And then self-actualization is kind of the, it's the peak. And the thing is, it's the hardest thing to do. And that's what I aim for when I talk about financial freedom. It's that you can reach self-actualization because you've got all of these other things, other bases covered. So here's my chart. And let me explain what it is. The numbers on the bottom here, that's actually my age. So I'm 40 in about a month and a half. So I made it 40. So the ages I have on here from left to right are 18 when I became an adult. That's kind of when I think of myself as an adult. 21, 25, 28, 30, 32, 35, 38, and 40. And you say, gee, Joanna, why did you pick those ages? Well, there were significant transitions, and I, and I had a clear recollection of something that was impacting it. And what you'll see is that the, uh, the other thing that you see, why, why is this different? Why, is the, why are some of the uh, row, like column sizes bigger? Because you know what? Sometimes we let other things besides the five areas of the pyramid let in our way or let into our effort or our money. Remember, time and money is how you reflect your real priorities. So this is where my priorities were at the different ages. So what was really interesting is when I was younger, I really didn't spend a lot of time in the love and belonging uh, thing. I spent most of my time in self-actualization, which is very interesting because you would think, well, shouldn't you get the basics right first? Well, I was a college student, guys. And when you're a college student, you're pursuing like this intellectual uh, pursuit. You know, you're, you're you're in school, right? You're learning and you're learning the things that hopefully you enjoy. So it's a great deal of my time spent in a self-actualization. Same in, when I was 25, I was in graduate school. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I can definitely talk about it. Let me go through this and I can actually address it on, even on this Periscope, but I can talk about it tomorrow, actually, because it's throw down. Um, you know, and, and one of the things about spending is you really need to think about what it is that you're, what it is that you're buying. I really try to get people to focus on what it is that they're buying and why, right? What it is that you're actually purchasing with your money. And uh, if you start tracking it, it's actually a really good tool. So anyway, the, the point is that over time, so as you see in my in my 20s, late 20s and 30s, I actually focus more on the self-esteem is interesting. So you see that the green doesn't take up a lot of time, a lot of uh, area, except the times where I traded off a job. So I took on a consulting job here. Come on, photos. That's my phone's trying to get charged. Um, I took up a, a consulting job that gave me a lot of, I spent a lot of my time having to fit into, hi, how are you? Having to fit into um, a culture that was not really aligned with my sort of natural sense. I had to dress up. I had to, you know, buy a lot of clothes. I had to spend a lot of time fitting in into a management consulting culture. So that's like here. Um, you can also see that, you know, at 32, I was a lot happier. Uh, no, don't worry about it. I was welcome questions. Um, I just want to make sure I deliver some of the content. Um, and so at 32, I was actually working on the campaign for Obama for America. And uh, it was really a great time in my life. And I felt very fulfilled. And I was also learning a lot. And it also at this time, when you see this shift and you see this big shift into yellow, what is happening here? Well, here's when I started my family. I had children at 35, right? So you can see that my my time has expanded greatly to cover some of these things. You can see family has taken up a lot more time. Not only that, because I became so much more conscious of this piece, I actually started spending more time with the people I care about. So I spend a lot of my time and energy with people, right? And so it is not like I'm... Um, like with my family, but also with friends. I spend time sitting down with people and talking to them about 
you know, I hopefully like a, a productive topic. That's why I love talking about money. But anybody who knows me who's in Chicago says, you know, can I come over? Um, yeah, tweet me, tweet me your your um, your Gmail. I don't because I don't know if I have it or Snapchat uh, to me. Um, and that's really best. You can direct message me. If you can't, for some reason, direct message me, tweet at me and say scope question and I'll add you. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can. Uh, okay, I captured your email. <laughs> I'm trying to do too many things. Anyway, uh, you know, here's what I did. So I just want to explain to you guys how I arrived at this. So again, what I did is I actually assigned a score. Like one of the things that I know how to do well is do estimates and assign numbers. So at each age, I really thought about what was I, what place was I in and what was I emphasizing? And then I, and then I graphed it out. And um, it was really interesting to see the, um, you know, the self-actualization is a real big component of my happiness. And, um, and then the self-esteem, yes, you're welcome. The self-esteem is, um, is like when you're pursuing something. And the reason I don't spend a ton of my time and effort in the self-esteem bucket, because as I know, I have some sort of this intrinsic sense of knowledge and confidence that I was just, I don't know how, like, I, like sometimes people are like, how do you, I'm like, I don't know how I got there, you know? I, I mean, I know how, I just don't really care what other people think about me that much. And so, which enables me to, do public speaking, to do take risks, to just be be very uh, authentic, I guess, be very honest. I'm, I'm overly honest with people. Um, and so um, the thing that I reflected on this love and belonging, I don't have a lot of friends from college or graduate school because I really didn't invest the time. I've reflected on it many times and said, you know what? I just didn't form relationships with people. I got kicked. I formed the casual relationships or the bonds of like presence being in the same time, but I really didn't invest the time and it shows because I really focused at that time on that self-actualization on pursuing my college degree. I was like, I was focused as uh, some of you who know me might say, of course you were, right? I was focused. Same in graduate school. I was focused. Um, and then I've taken that focus and uh, I've taken that focus down a little bit especially when it comes to uh, pursuing money, right? So uh, at 32, I had, uh, like I was working the campaign in the low paid position, but then I went in, um, yeah, so one, one of the things I've seen people do, so let's talk about that. So anyway, um, so but that's that's really the point. The, the, like, and so what I would encourage you to do is to do your Maslow, sort of Maslow where you spend your time and where you have in the past and think about where you want to spend in the future because that comes to your point. How do you stop spending or how do you redirect your money? You need to have a goal for that money, right? If your money is just sitting there and you're like, I have no idea what to do with it, it's just going to, you're going to spend it because it's like you're a little bit uncomfortable with it. Um, if you set a goal and say, here is, you have to be really honest with yourself about what you want. This is the hardest thing to do is to acknowledge what you want in life because getting there is actually not that hard. And I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying the hardest thing is to figure out what you want. If you can identify the things that you want more than anything, whether it's the self-actualization piece where you're like, I will, I would want so much to do this, to be this, to uh, whether it's a started business, whether it's the relationship you want to have with somebody, with other people, it's how you want to spend your time, right? If you figure out how you want to spend your time, you need to start aligning your money with how you want to spend your time. Because if you continue to wish for things, right? But if you're just like, oh, I'm just going through life, you have to spend the time and really write it down. Um, right. And I think that's, that's really, really hard if you feel like you have no purpose. And so, um, give yourself a challenge. I I've seen this. I've, I know other people have spent nothing in a day. S just try to go through a day spending nothing. Um, you know, I mean, there are tools like you have to become somewhere and you have to put a little bit of work, start tracking, right? That's why I recommend mint.com because it's so simple. Start, 
starts tracking what you spend. And then uh, I know some people, you can take some drastic actions where you go to cash, right? Some people recommend going to cash if you're really just very, like, you're just like, I just, I just go and I buy because it makes me feel better, right? It makes me feel like I've worked hard for something. So the immediate sense, you could switch to cash, leave your credit card at home and bring, you know, $20. Set a limit for yourself. You are going to have to work through that and you may feel deprived and may feel anxious about it, but there really isn't like, there isn't a shortcut because you're a free person, right? And this is the freedom that you have it comes with that responsibility to say, well, okay, in the immediate sense, I'm just gonna, I'm just not gonna do it. So the thing is though, if you, if you're a habitual spender, right, if you've gotten into a habit of online shopping or shopping at a store, if you just created it as part of your habit, you are going to have to replace your spending habit, your shopping habit with another habit. This is a very, very effective thing. So find something that you can enjoyably do. This could be a time with friends, could be a phone call with a friend, right? Um, could be a class you sign up with instead of shopping, do, a, do a, a, a portion of the class. And I know that I sound like all nerdy, but like that's what I do. Uh, maybe even like a, a cognitive associate something. Instead of shopping, I'm gonna drink hot tea, right? Find some activity or something pleasurable. And I'm not saying like replace it with eating, like another, you try and make sure it's a good habit. Um, so find something that you're like, I really wish I would do this more regularly and try to substitute when it comes to your spending time. So first identify, right, are you, are you a habitual spender? Because that's usually what will happen is you're a habitual spender and replace your habit. That's going to be the most effective thing to do in the near term. And for the long term to sustain it, you really have to give your money a job. Uh, and you say you have to give it a goal. Um, and it could be like a business goal where you want to start a business. It could be, I want to feel secure in retirement. If you have family, it's doing something for other people. Um, and then you need to take an interest in investing, for example, and have a means to do that. So that would be my, my advice for you in terms of looking for that, uh, looking to stop sort of the bleeding, right? And um, the immediate things is just start replacing your spending habit with another habit with a more beneficial habit, but longer term, you're going to need to, and write it down, right? Like, don't just think it, like literally write down how you're gonna accomplish it. You can write it with pen and paper on a notepad. You can type it in so you can, like in your phone, in notes, so you can reflect on it. Um, every time, right? I mean, if you're really out of control, like do do what people do with other addictions, like, you know, the little rubber band, right? Snap your wrist, you, got, you know, I'm not gonna buy it. Um, and then um, start like, if you have stuff around you, like start enjoying the things you have. Sometimes getting rid of things can help you do that. Sometimes getting rid of things will help you reflect on, um, I'm only surrounded by the things that really that I really find enjoyable because you're trying, you're like, oh, I'll just get more stuff and everything you get, it never fills that gap. So you're always accumulating things. So um, those are my, those are the things that I think I would recommend just to sort of, the fi to stop the financial, uh, financial thing. And there are other people who probably specialize a little bit more in them, but that's my first instincts. And I, go, I, I talk about it because I've done these. I've done these things, right? Sometimes I'll find myself buying, like thinking about buying things mindlessly and I've gotten into like getting rid of things like really makes you go, you know what, I bought all this stuff and now I just want to get rid of it because I'm not using it, right? I, I like um, the, uh, what's Mary Kondo's book? Um, the, the like something about tidying up uh, there's a woman you know, organizing a book that talks about decluttering and um yeah purging it you know and, and it's the process of it it's not it's being really thoughtful about it because that's one of the things that stops you from buying right it stops you from from entering into the cycle again and so um so that's the uh, that's one of the things is, is, is figure out your triggers, right? Like then reflect, like if you do fail, don't give beat yourself, don't beat yourself up. If you buy something, go, why did I do that? Like what, what caused me to do that? Why was I thinking that I need this? Because that's kind of like when you're just, when you, when money's just leaving you. So again, it depends if you, that's a physical experience when you go in the store and shopping, passing the time, or if you are um, doing online and just spending money um, and just like, you know, it's kind of like any recovery. You know, again, replace the habit and do other things. So um, hopefully that was uh, 
that that gives you some ideas. Um, but anyway, this was really the uh, the goal for today is to show you guys sort of the walk the walk, and um, and tell you how I've been thinking about how I spend my my time and effort over my like almost you know two decades of life and how it's shifted. And that's really what I'm trying to encourage you to do is to shift your time and money and really evaluate according to those, those buckets. Because again, it's it's not just to, uh, and if you, by the way, if you're finding yourself to spending a lot of time and your physiological needs and a lot of money, like then really figure out like, why is that, right? Why is that? Um, because you do want to get out of that struggle, right? Like I really don't, I, I'm, I'm hoping that people get out of that struggle uh, because you can't focus on the next level, right? It's so hard to go to the next level of the pyramid if you're if you're like constantly worrying about rent, right, and um, or food, right, it's so so hard. You cannot be who you can be, right? You cannot be your fullest self if you're struggling about things. Uh, but then don't get caught up. Sometimes people kind of get stuck in that. They're like, well, I'll just you know. Then they go bigger in one category. They're like, I'll keep getting a bigger house, right? Like the 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 insecurity of it gets them to reallocate too much of their time and effort. Once your base is covered, move up to the next level, right? And that's what I want people, the goal of financial freedom is to get to the next, to the last two levels. Like, I mean, hopefully that you're spending time with people and you're building connections because they're the things that really matter in life and that you're getting to a place where you're uh, getting to um, achieve, those, uh, achieve those things. So let me just do a real quick snapshot of that pyramid again it's probably best if you google because this one's blurry but this is you know the uh, it is blurry it's blurry because it's out of focus right so this is the the pyramid um for and again think about how you're spending time and money at each base um yeah so you're gonna watch the replay or watch it on twitter um and uh but that's really the uh the goal um, is to look at that and evaluate it because that's the like I have to have context like the the I mean I, I'm not here to to get people who are already really well off to be better off like I'm I'm working downstream I'm working to get people who are who have a contrib who want to make a contribution uh, you're welcome uh, who want to make a contribution to the world but are struggling because of these there's a gap right there's a gap in their financial journey where they really feel like they can't make the leap and I want you to get to here financially so you feel like you have the ability uh, to to give your best uh, that's my goal like my teachings of financial freedom are not are, are in that context because I'm very very passionate about it Anyway, I gotta go. I have a I'll do a phone interview in a bit, and uh, I will um, uh, see you guys tomorrow. I will be traveling to my conference tomorrow. It's at Normal Illinois uh, tomorrow afternoon. I'm gonna be on uh, in the afternoon doing Periscope demos. So if you see me um, tweeting out or, or doing the Periscope notifications tomorrow afternoon, it's all for the conference. Feel free to join or ignore. Uh, and then you can uh, you can watch me talk about it. I will. I have the picture. Uh, I have the picture of your email, and I will send you the chart that I made uh, on uh, on the you know on the uh, on my uh, sort of my journey uh, amongst the Maslow pyramid. Um, happy to do that, and maybe a snapshot of the of the pyramid as well. So thank you everybody for joining and for your time and for your participation engagement. Always happy to uh, to to talk about money and how financial freedom can help you achieve your goals in life. Uh, and then I'll be back on tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, to talk about more money habits. Every single day, we uh, pay a little bit of attention to your money. Every single day, if you pay attention to your money and if you look after it, it will look after you. So take control and take charge. And don't be intimidated and don't be discouraged. I'll be here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thank you guys so much. See you then.